Welcome to Global Kids Ministry under the leadership of Youth Pastor Carrie Royal online every Sunday live at 12 noon. This exciting, creative, and interactive ministry fellowships at Kingdom Faith Global Ministries under senior pastors, Pastors Andre and Kim Sanders, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 18240 Southwest 110th Avenue. Every fourth Sunday is Youth Sunday. All are welcome. Come and be blessed. Hello, everybody. This is Youth Pastor Carrie Royal from Kingdom Faith Global Ministries, and we are in week six of our series, Head of the Class. Yes, because we're moving to the head of the class. Last week, we discussed when Jesus was replaced as teacher. He's been replaced with the Holy Spirit because he had to ascend to the Father. So he said, I'm going to send you a new comforter. And that comforter is now our teacher. So yes, we're moving to the head of the class and we're about to we're about to accomplish greater works because the Holy Spirit abides within us. Now, we learned as Jesus told the disciples to wait that even while we're waiting, God is still moving. He's still preparing us and the situation to conform to his will. So don't be anxious because good things come to those who wait and now the Holy Spirit is here on the scene teaching leading guiding and doing so much more for us to achieve greater for the kingdom of god because jesus said greater works what we do and we accomplish it through the holy spirit but today today we're about to discuss a story when the holy spirit led paul into the unseen world and revealed things that had not yet taken place see greater was already happening and see, he was a prisoner. He was a prisoner on a ship that was going to Rome because he had to stand trial. So on this ship, they were led into a storm. During the storm, an angel came to Pete, Paul, excuse me, and revealed that they would make it through, but the ship would be destroyed. See, there are some other events that took place during this story that played a part in the greatness of it all. But in the end, Paul and the other men survived came through victoriously just as the angel had said see because the 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 holy spirit will never lead you falsely it always speaks truth he always speaks truth and they were led to dry land but that's what walking in the spirit is all about see it's not just doing the right thing it's about hearing it's about hearing from God and being a witness to his power to do greater things. And Paul single-handedly, through the grace of God, through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, served as a witness to save 276 men from death. Is that greater or what? So through this story, we're going to talk about us being a witness what it means to live in the spirit. We're about to witness what it means to live in a kingdom where you can believe. Believe in what you haven't seen. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. You can be more than you ever thought that you would be because the king's glory will be revealed for you, through you. You can do more than you ever thought you would be because the king's glory will be revealed through you. The kingdom of God produces greater through us, but it's only for those who believe. Only for those who believe. So yes, you will be my witnesses. Because people need to know. And today's lesson is called, The Power of Witnessing. And it's from the story of the shipwreck, where the Bible basis comes from Acts 27th chapter verses 21 through 44 and as usual we have a memory verse we're going to go ahead and read that together it states but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth and that comes from Acts 
chapter 1, verse 8. And we have three lesson topics. Those topics are, part one is anchored. Part two is breaking bread. And part three is life by the Spirit. Part one, anchored. God wants to give you more than your rights to stand on in the kingdom of God. He wants to give you a God word. <laughs> but we must be available to hear. A God word is simply a word from God. And see, your word is your witness. Your word becomes your testimony for his glory. See, because what God said in the middle of the storm is what you have to hold on to knowing that his word is truth. And that's how it brings life as you believe and stand on it and hold on to it. That word helped Paul bring deliverance for 276 men. So think about it. What has God said to you in the middle of your storm? What does God say to you in hard situations? When you take time just to be still and listen, you can hear him just as Paul did when he heard the angel in the storm. See, we must be able to find a quiet place in our storm to hear from him. You're not gonna hear from him if you're frantic. You're not gonna hear from him if your mind is cluttered with what's going on. See, being that way blocks God's voice. God is not gonna shout at you. He speaks with a still small voice. See, you're not able to hear your angel when your mind is too cluttered. God sends the angel to minister to us, to receive vision. And God anchors you because we just need a God word to be anchored. We have God's word, a God word in the Bible. But sometimes God wants to speak directly to you about your situation. Because if you don't receive a word strictly about your situation sometimes, sometimes you get faint-hearted. But God wants to give you more to bring release for you and for others. So we need a God word. That's the only thing that's able to keep you sound and strong in a storm. See, that's what anchors you. Anchors are used to stop drifting. It keeps you, it keeps you in right alignment. It keeps you positioned. And see, Paul's vision allowed him to be anchored. See, vision is just knowing beyond what you can see with your normal eye. And that's what Peter received when he received a word from the angel. The angel told him something that he could not see with his normal eye. And he was able to spread it and tell others. See, he was anchored in God's word, which keeps you through any and all situations. Paul was kept in right position. He was kept stabilized. That means he was anchored in the word. He was kept by God's word. It was his anchor and it proved more secure than all the other force, all the other four anchors that were dropped down by the ship because they had to be cut away. It is such an awesome story. Make sure you read that Bible basis because in the Bible basis, you'll see there were four anchors that the sailors let down from the ship, but they all had to be cut away when they were ready to move. And it wasn't until after they began to move that the ship suffered shipwreck. But see, when, when, when you have limited capabilities, you're not able to sustain throughout every situation, throughout every move. But God does not have limited capabilities. He's able to sustain you no matter what because you never have to cut his word. You never have to release his word. His word stands true. The promise may not come immediately, but it does eventually. And while you're waiting, you hold to that word. See, while the ship was advancing forward, they experienced shipwreck. But Paul was still anchored because his anchor was not in things. Hmm. It was not in physical things. It was not in tangible things that you can touch or that you can see. It wasn't in other people. It was in God's word. God spoke a word to him. And sometimes you need that God word. 
His confidence was not in his own will. His confidence was not in his friends. It was not in the job, what he had to do. It was not in how smart he was or how nice he was looking. <laughs> See, the Spirit gave him a God word to hold on to. The Spirit gave him vision. It is insight into the plan of God. And God still speaks. He does the same for us. He was able to know the end of the story before it even happened. So when you know the end of the story, before it's over, that's vision. And you know the outcome, you don't have to worry, you don't have to fear. That's walking by the spirit. That's walking by faith. That's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, as he believed, he became a witness. And as a result, he was able to testify with confidence to the goodness of the Lord. See, listen to this. In Acts chapter 27, verse 22, the word says, this is part of the Bible basis. But now I urge you to keep your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the God of whose I am and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. And then there was another occasion when Paul was able to serve as a witness. In verses 31 through 32, it states, Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it fall away. You see, a strong witness is a first-hand witness, knows things firsthand. They don't tell things based on what others have experienced or what they somebody else said, he says, she say, but what they've experienced themselves. See, the memory verse states, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness. That means he wants all of us to be able to witness his power. He wants all of us to experience it firsthand. The Holy Spirit gives us power to become a witness as we learn to rely on him as the teacher. That's what had just happened with Paul. See, Romans 10 verses 14 through 15 summarizes and says, How can we hear without a preacher or a teacher? And how can he preach or teach unless he be sent? That's why Jesus sent us a new teacher so that we can hear from him. See, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit as new teacher to empower us to be a witness. John chapter six, verse 28 and 29 states, then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has See, we have to believe in the comforter. We have to believe in the Holy Spirit. We have to believe in the power that we have within because it's he's going to tell us things that haven't even happened yet. But we have to have a clear mind to hear, even in the middle of a storm. And it's only for those who believe because it's going to be things in the from the unseen world. It's going to be things that have not happened yet. It's going to be things that are invisible. Things that are intangible. See, God has sent us a new teacher. We're in training. That means for higher learning, we must believe, believe in him who was sent. In training, see, we are enduring for the sake of the cross, right? So as we endure for the sake of the cross, we have to tell it. The things that we endure, how God brought us through and how he gave us that word that said, you shall survive. Don't worry, don't fear. He will lead you to do. And we're gonna see, God, as we go deeper into this story, we're gonna show you how he spoke to Paul and led him to be a witness, to lead the others to do certain things for life. <laughs> Even see things as simple as breaking bread. But telling it makes us witness. 
We endure so that others may live. Like Jesus did on the cross. He endured so that we could live. And that's our same responsibility as well. God said that they would make it through the storm. So why, even though they would make it through the storm, did they have to go through the storm? To be a witness. It's not about the fact that you have to go through. But it's about, it's the fact of how you go through. It's what you believe as you go through. It's what he empowers you to do as you go through. Because sometimes when you go through the water, through the storm, he's going to tell you to do things like he told Peter in the middle of the storm. All right, now walk on water. But we have to be a witness to help someone else. How can kingdom citizens expect to be able to help someone else if they can't relate? We have to be able to endure ourselves so that we can relate to what others are going through. He doesn't dismiss us from the struggle, from the problem when we become kingdom citizens. That would make us unrelatable. He even came to endure so that we could he could relate to us. See, as we endure... We take courage, as the angel said. We stand strong. And we know that God is going to bring us out. For it's for his glory. So he has to. His word, he has to stand true to. And when we, we, and when we allow him to receive the glory from our lives, mm, he blesses us for it. But there's no glory if there's no story. And we can be a witness in more ways than one. It's not just about what we say, but about what we do as well. There's glory in breaking bread. And guess what? It is review time. In this section of the review, we are going to be reviewing Anchored, which is part one. And in this section of the review, we're going to be matching. We will be matching Side A with side B. The first one is God. Number two states vision. Three is angels. Four, a word. Five, faith. Six, anchor. Now B states A, something that keeps you from drifting. B, the evidence of things not seen. C, something that has not yet happened. D, it becomes your testimony. E, who or what we should be anchored in. Five, ministers to us from the unseen world. And the first one is God. What is the correct answer? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, it is E. And just keep in mind, when we do matching, we can only use each answer once. So this one is E. God, who or what we should be anchored in? Absolutely. Number two, vision. Is it A, B, C? D or F. Thank you so much. It is definitely C. Everyone who says C, you are correct. Because vision is something that has not yet happened. It's not something you can see with your natural eyes. It's something that God gives. All right. And number three, angels. Is that A? B, D, or F? Absolutely. Angels minister to us from the unseen world. Absolutely. God gives us ministering angels. Four. Is it A, B, or D? The answers are getting slim. Which is it? You are correct. Once again, great job, Global Kids, and everyone participating with us today. If you said D, it becomes your testimony. You are absolutely correct. Five, faith. It is B, the evidence of things not seen. Remember, because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And we're on the last one. Anchor must mean what? Anchor. 
you are absolutely correct. Something that keeps you from drifting. Because see, when you're drifting, you're you're shaky. You're going, you're you're wishy-washy. You one day you're strong and the other day you're not. One day you're following one thing, the other day you're following something else. One day you're believing and standing strong and say, I'm doing this, and the other next that moment, when storms come, you're falling. So, but the anchor keeps you standing strong and it allows you to hold to faith. Now, part two is breaking bread. So you didn't know there was great importance in breaking bread, did you? Breaking bread is all about food, but have you ever noticed that food brings people together? It really does. It's not just something that we do to because our flesh needs it, but the soul needs us at the soul needs it as well. See, because people they join in fellowship to to break bread together naturally and spiritually. We we come together to break bread with family and friends for holidays, social events, you know, Sunday dinners, even church events. So breaking bread brings people together. Hebrews 10. Verse 25 states, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So as breaking bread brings us together in fellowship, we are encouraging one another. But food does more than bring people together. See, because sometimes people get irritable when they don't eat. I don't know how many of you do, but I've been there a few times. <laughs> Not when I'm fasting because I know I'm giving up food for a purpose. But sometimes you just, your stomach just be starting to get all, you know, all cranky. And then you started to get a little moody. Sometimes we got to rebuke that flesh. But people can also lose their appetites when they get worried. And that's what happened on the ship. Food plays a big role in our lives. But what about bread specifically? See, there's something very symbolic about bread. It's been used in the Bible so many times. See, in the Bible, bread always served as a symbol for life. Yes, it did. First of all, it's, it's in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. It's talking about provision for life, naturally and spiritually. That's what God does. But bread also was a gift. You know, when God fed the people... Um, um, when Moses led the people into the wilderness, God gave a manna each day. So it was a gift. And he also gave it to gave them bread at the, at the last supper. Right? Exactly. And when bread came, so bread became the body of Christ. But bread served so many purposes in the Bible. There was also when he multiplied the fish and two loaves of bread. So Bread became a sign of sharing, and it symbolized the word of God, which nourished the crowds. For, for we know Jesus is the bread of life, right? And this is what's going on in this story. John 6, 35 states, when Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. So yes, when he said, I am the bread of life, that means... When we eat his word, we'll never be hungry. And Paul urged them to eat. Listen to this in verses 34 through 36. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. And after he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. So what does that sound like to you? Communion, right? L listen again, verse 35. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. So here Paul was communing with God as they watched. So as they watched, that made him another witness. And this time it was about his lifestyle. People will watch your life. They'll watch your lifestyle when you profess to be a kingdom citizen. And it should bring them encouragement. They should be able to feast on what you are giving them 
through your actions. See, they watch what you do and your words must line up with what you do. Your words must line up to your actions. You can't say one thing and do another and be a witness. See, James 2 verse 26 says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. So they were encouraged by what they saw. Because remember, we learn, we learn some people learn by hearing, some by doing, and some by seeing. And it was when they watched Paul break the bread. He took the bread, he blessed it in front of them, and then he broke it. And it was when they saw him doing this that they were, and then after he ate it, they believed. They were encouraged. So, but that also works in reverse. Sometimes we can cause people to stumble by what we do, by what they see. You know, a lot of people feel like, sometimes they say, Christ, you know, kingdom citizens, people who believers are, are hypocrites. They say one thing and do another. And it says, the Bible says, woe to them who cause others to stumble. See, if you're professing Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can't say one thing and do another. It will cause people to stumble. And then the Bible says, woe unto you. God is going to hold you accountable. Because we're supposed to be a light. And as a witness, we demonst you demonstrate your faith by your actions. See, Paul said you need it to survive. He was breaking bread with them. He said, you need it to survive. He was communing with God because he told them they need this for their survival. Because they, they, they were still worried. Sometimes you do go through things that can really get you down, that can really get you upset, that can really take you through. They were still in darkness naturally, which meant that it symbolized they were in darkness spiritually. It meant they were, they were captive to negative mindsets. They were in darkness. But we are come to bring light. We shed light on the situation. See, <laughs> just like people today, some may not believe until they see you come through. Your life has to be a witness until they know that it's possible, until they see you walk in it. Sometimes others believe because of your faith. So God needs us to be that witness. The Holy Spirit is teaching us to be that witness. It's empowering us to be that witness. Until you have the courage to stand as a light, sometimes others won't. That's just what it is. Because some people learn by what they see. Sometimes you cause people to stumble. Woe unto you. But we're supposed to be the light that causes, that bring life. See, we have purpose. Paul had vision and he believed and allowed his life to be an example. Vision only comes from God as he communed with God. As he took the bread and blessed it and broke it, they were watching. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. That was the same thing Jesus did when he said, do this in remembrance of me. He said, take the bread, it is my body. He is the bread of life. So as Jesus, as Paul, communed, communed with him, communed with the Spirit, communed with Jesus, communed with the Father, mm, he was spreading life. He was saying, take, eat. This is life. You need it to survive. This is for your survival naturally and spiritually. Paul was living a kingdom lifestyle and that is what we are called to do. See, the same thing he confessed was the same thing that he did. It caused others to believe because he was in right alignment. He didn't say one thing and do another. He lived what he spoke. And if you believe, and if you believe it, and if you're a kingdom citizen, why are you doubting? Why are you in fear? Everything's in an uproar. Everything's in a different situation. Everything's moving differently. Some people have lost their jobs. Some people don't know what their next move is going to be, where they're, you know, 
how they are making it, but the grace of God is helping them through. And in it, he said, while you wait, take courage. Don't be afraid. Take courage. See, we have to be able to stand strong when others aren't so they can see the power within us. See, when you're going through things, global kids, even in school, and that test gets a little hard, you have to stand strong and say, God, I studied like you told me to. Now bring these things to my remembrance. You said if I delight myself in you, you would give me the desires of my heart. You have to be able to stand on the word and break bread and give it to others. Tell them how you making it through. Be a witness. Because it causes others to believe. The spirit will lead you to do what you need to do. We don't know what's coming, but the spirit does. And he reveals and gives us insight. He gives you vision. See, it was dark, but Paul could still see the angel because he didn't need his eyes to do it. He had vision. God allowed him to see. God allowed him to hear. You do not need sight for vision because see, most of the time, what you see is not gonna line up to what the spirit is saying. What you see will not confirm what the spirit tells you. That's why it's about walking by faith. The substance of things that you hope for that the Spirit is telling you and it's the evidence of things that you don't yet see. It will look completely opposite, completely different from what the Spirit is situation, your, from what the Spirit is saying. Your situation may look like this can't happen, but the Spirit is may be telling you, yes, walk through this door it will happen for you so you have to be in tune with the spirit you have to believe so he urged them we need to eat for survival it was for natural health and for spiritual health in breaking bread that day they received life they received life they gained the strength they needed to stand spiritually and naturally see their strength needed to increase because there was more that they had to endure they didn't know that See, all the spirit told him was the end. You're going to survive, but the ship is not going to make it. But as you listen to the spirit, it's going to lead you in what to do. So Paul was urging them, eat. You need it for survival. It's the same naturally and spiritually. That spiritual need, food, you need it for survival. That's just like you need natural food for survival. And as they ate, their mindset was changed. God was able to use Paul because Paul made himself available. As the song says, Lord, I'm available to you. I don't know if you all know that song, Global Kids, but it says, my heart has been opened and I am available to you. But if you're not available, the vision will not come. You have to create space. You have to create space for God in your life in every situation because that's when God wants to speak. He speaks a lot in your storm, but he will not do it if you're not if you're not peaceful. If you're too preoccupied with the storm, your mind is not going to be clear to hear what God is saying. He would not have been able to receive we have to invite them in and wait on them. As we create that space, invite them in and wait on them. The angel didn't appear until they had gone a while without food. And when Paul spoke, when the angel spoke, Paul believed. See, you know he believed because his actions lined up with what he believed. Why do you need to eat if you think you're getting ready to die? See, the, the people on the boat, the men on the boat, they weren't eating. They thought they were going to perish. But Paul said, you need to eat for your survival. We will not perish. We will not die. You need food to survive, spiritually and naturally. 
Get into your word and meditate on it. When God gives you vision, see, when he gives you a word, you must walk in it. You must hold on to it. That is your strength. It's vision. You must believe in it. See, you must demonstrate it. It's for your survival and for the survival of others. And guess what? <laughs> It is review time. We are reviewing part two, Breaking Bread. And in this section, we are going to be doing a little bit of unscrambling. Now, the qu first question states, Breaking Bread is good for what? What is Breaking Bread good for? All right, you have all of your letters. Now some letters are gonna start popping up. Let's see if you can unscramble it before it is finished being unscrambled. Here we go. Absolutely. Breaking bread is good for fellowship. Number two, fellowship is good for what? Absolutely. Fellowship is good for encouraging one another. And number three, the last one is Encouragement brings what? Absolutely, life. <laughs> Encouragement brings life. Great job, everyone. Great job, Global Kids. Thank you so much. Great job. But yes, food always brings people together. <laughs> Who doesn't love to eat? Even if you don't love to eat, food is essential for life. We break bread together because it's fellowship. Fellowship helps us to encourage one another and encouragement is essential for life, just as we saw with Paul. All right? So let's be encouraged one to another. Let's be a witness. Now we're in part three, life by the spirit. See, when you make yourself available to God, God will make himself available to you. No matter how bad things look, no matter what you got on your last test, you can be sure that his word will come to pass and the things that you go through that the flesh don't want to endure, it works out for your good. It doesn't matter what you went through or what you're going through. What happened 15 minutes ago? Know that God is going to work it out for your good. See, if it's not good, it's not over because everything that God does is good. Well, look, we, we, we can actually go back to creation to testify of that. Look, when he created light, it was good. He created the seas. Everything he did was good. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And during the whole storm, God was moving. See, God always has a plan. And he's working it out for your good. Listen to Jeremiah verse 20, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So no matter how bad your day was or how bad the situation may seem, remember, God always has a plan and he has good things in store for you it's not for your for your destruction the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy but god jesus said i came that you may have life and have it abundantly so he has a plan of good things for you and he turns around and works everything out for your good that's why it's important not to listen to the flesh but to the spirit see see the spirit like the angel when he spoke to 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 Paul, he speaks truth to give you a good end. 
but the flesh will have you all in your feelings. Have you have you depressed? Getting, getting angry, stressed out, anxious. The Spirit gave Paul vision to witness. And as Paul believed, and his actions followed his beliefs, he became that witness. So it's a process. You're given the vision to witness, and you become the witness as you allow your faith to produce deeds, actions that follow your words. See, your words have to line up with your actions. And they will if you truly believe. And as a result, his witness brought life to others and himself. Listen, because before the shipwreck, before the shipwreck, they were encouraged because of his example. And after the shipwreck, see, this is the part that you hadn't heard yet. After the shipwreck, they wanted to kill all the prisoners because they didn't want them to escape. But the centurion, he wanted to spare Paul's life. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh. I broke bread with this man. This man encouraged me. This man brought me life. See, so they were allowed to live because of Paul's faith, because of Paul's belief, because of Paul. See, we must build the church, reveal the father, and make sons and daughters, one story at a time. People's hearts and minds have to be changed. How do we expect to allow and help, be helpers and encouragers one to another so that their hearts and minds can be changed if we don't witness? That was the whole point of what Paul went through. His story was for God's glory to reveal the Father so that the church can be built by making new sons and daughters. Paul's life was spared. When the ship broke, they had to swim. They didn't know that they were going to have to do that. They were in some deep, deep waters. But see, Paul was being led by the Spirit. He was being led by the Spirit and the Spirit brought life. It saved the life of Paul and 276 other men. The Spirit brings life. They were in waters that could have consumed them if they hadn't eaten. So it's about life spiritually and naturally. So not only do we have to feed our flesh, we have to feed our spirits. Stay in the Word. No matter how bad your day was, no matter how bad, No matter how bad your day was, no matter how bad the situation, remember, God always has a plan. And he has good things in store for you. He has plans for you to give you hope and a future. He works it all out for our good. It doesn't matter what happened 15 minutes ago. God is working it out for your good. That's why it's important to listen to the spirit and not to the flesh. See, see the spirit, just like the angel that came to Paul, speaks truth. That gives you a good end. The flesh just wants to, to dwell in the flesh. Wants to be emotional. Get all your emotions stirred up. Things like anger and gets you depressed and, 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 and anxious and stressed. But see, the Spirit gave Paul vision to witness. It gave Paul vision for life. The Spirit brings life. And as it gave Paul vision to witness, Paul believed. And his actions followed his belief, and he became that witness. So in the end, Paul's vision allowed him to become the witness. So life was brought through the spirit. His witness brought life to others and himself. See, because before the shipwreck, they were encouraged because of his example. There's another part to the story that you haven't heard. Because see, after the shipwreck, 
they the the the, the soldiers wanted to kill Paul and the other uh, other prisoners because they didn't want him to escape. But the centurion, the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life, so they were all allowed to live. He was like, uh uh, because of this man, I have life. Because of this man, I was able to see. Because of this man, I was encouraged. Because of this man, I can now become a son or a daughter. See, we must build the church, reveal the father, and make sons and daughters one story at a time. How do we expect to reveal the father, build the church, and make sons and daughters if we don't witness the witness builds the church because it reveals the father and in turn makes sons and daughters isn't that powerful that's our motto kingdom faith people's hearts and minds have to be changed and their hearts and minds were changed and paul's life was spared as well see when that ship broke they had to swim they didn't know what was coming. They didn't know that they was going to still have to endure. But the Spirit knew. That's why the Spirit has to lead us. Because the Spirit knows all. The Spirit lives in the unseen. And as we believe and abide in the Spirit, we live in the unseen. We hear from the Spirit. We believe and know the things of the Spirit. They were in deep waters that could have consumed them if they hadn't eaten. Because we need food for survival. Just like Paul said. Naturally and spiritual. And spiritually. It gives us strength. That's why we have to stay in the word. See. See they could have been consumed if they hadn't believed. The word strengthens us spiritually. To handle the storm. It gives us a God word. Believe the word that God gives you no matter what it looks like, see? Because when you don't have the physical strength to endure, you grow faint, you grow weak. And just like that, just like your natural body needs food to, for strength, the mind has to be set. You need spiritual food to survive. This, your, spirit will, your spirit will grow faint and weak if it's not strong enough to survive the storm. Same thing. Everything you experience, you can experience naturally, the spirit goes through spiritually. Remember that. That's how we remember what the spirit needs. Everything your physical body needs, your spiritual body needs. It needs food for life. It needs encouragement. It needs to be strengthened. It needs to be trained. So Paul didn't know what was to come, but the spirit did. And about 276 lives were saved because Paul made himself available to hear what the spirit had to say to the church. Listen to this, Revelations chapter two, verse 29. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. And it's not talking about these physical ears. We have to hear with us our spiritual ear. We have to be in tune to the spirit. And we all have ears. Just like we all have natural ears, we all have spiritual ears. So we have to hear what the spirit says to the church. They weren't believers. But Paul was. And believers create, make other believers. So you must allow your faith to be stretched because the kingdom wants to reveal great things through each of us. He wants to reveal the Father. Not just for me. Not just for you. For everybody. We're meant to be an army of believers to do great things for the kingdom of God. It's that greater. Greater. We're an army of believers. We are going higher and doing greater. We're moving to the head of the class. That's why the Holy, that's, that's what the Holy Spirit does. See, you don't just wake up that way. It, it, it is a process. And don't get frustrated when it doesn't all come at once. It's levels, it's steps. But if you learn a little more each day, you'll get there. 
I have to keep saying that because some people just like to jump ahead. You have to get it in steps and in phases. And see, wherever you are now, whatever you're going through, this is your story for the God's glory. This is your witness. This is your testimony. And God wants to give you a word in it. But you must clear your mind. Clear your mind of everything you're thinking and let God speak. See, he doesn't want to hear you. We need to hear him. So you have to be intentional about hearing. Clear your mind. God has a word for you. Clear your mind. Get into your word. Create space for him. Create space for him. Invite him in. Get into your word. And take time to meditate on it. And see, sometimes everybody don't, everybody is not, it's not easy for everybody to meditate. So sometimes you might have to get a pen and paper. And as you read, just start writing some things down. Whatever he gives you from that, even if you feel like, okay, even if you just start retelling the story, after a while you're gonna start seeing, you're writing something different. And, what, and then you're gonna start saying, wow, I didn't ever thought about that. And you're gonna start receiving new revelation. See, Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on things above. As you set your mind on things above, You'll bring life to yourself and others because you're going to be receiving word just like Paul did from the angel in the middle of the storm. He was able to bring life to himself and others. So, so, so get into the word and meditate on it. Get that journal. Start writing. Sometimes people it's a little harder for. So what you do is you move at your own pace, but don't give up. Don't give up. It's just like exercise. Remember I said everything the body needs, the spirit needs as well. And you need to exercise that spiritual hearing, that, that, that hearing. It's a spiritual hearing. It's a spiritual hearing, but e exercise it. Because the more you exercise it, the easier it'll be to do. Just like sometimes in, uh, you may not be able to play a sport, but the more you try it, the more you, you practice at it, the better you get at it, right? This is the same as hearing in the spirit. It's the same as living in the spirit. It's the same as walking by faith. A little bit here and a little bit more the next time and a little bit more the next time. Let's make ourselves available to God to become the witness that he wants us to be and watch things work out for you. Things will change. And guess what? It is review time. We are reviewing part three, Life by the Spirit. And in this section, we're gonna be doing true or false. We have about four questions. And let's let, just put T or F in the comments. The first one states, the Holy Spirit gives us power and helps us to witness. That is absolutely true. As the scripture says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And it also says we shall be a witness. Number two. God has plans of evil for some people. Is that true or is that false? Place T or F into the comments. That is absolutely false. God does not have plans of evil for anyone. Remember we read in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and a future, a good future. And another scripture says he works it all out for our good. Believe it, stand firm in it, because it's life. It break, we are breaking bread, y'all, we're breaking bread. All right, number three, God only speaks to some of the church. Is that true or is that false? Does God only speak to some of the church? Absolutely false. Revelations 2.29 states, He who has an ear, let the, him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We are the church. He speaks to all of us. And we all have an ear to hear. We're just not listening. Or maybe we're trying to hear and can't. 
but put those things into practice that I gave you and you will start hearing. And the final question. God wants us to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. Is that true or is that false? That is correct, everybody. Thank you, Global Kids. Everyone who said true, you are correct. Colossians 3, 2. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. That's what the word says. Because as you set your minds on things above, it's going to bring life. The things of the flesh, the earthly things will only bring destruction. All right? Don't be focused on what's going on. That's earthly things. But focus on what the word says. That's things above. Focus on what the spirit is saying. That is things above. It's going to bring life. We're going to go ahead and read our memory verse one more time. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Acts 1.8 Yes, thank you so much, everybody. You shall receive power. But see, that scripture gives us insight into our purpose. We will receive power. We will. That's a declaration. And his word always comes true. It says we will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we will be a witness. It empowers us to be a witness because it empowers us to bring life. And we can be a witness to God's power. A will is not a suggestion. It is a command to become a witness. We must have experience. So God, through the Holy Spirit, gives us the experience to become that witness that we are meant to be. That's, so, you know what? But that's why there is such a lack of passion in witnessing. If you think about it, everybody, people don't like become, being a witness. Because, see, you have to allow God to give you a story that draws passion out of you. And that's the problem. We're not allowing God to give us a story for his glory. See, if God had used you to save 276 lives, would that be worth telling? Of course it would. It would bring, draw the passion out of you to become that witness. But see, no story is too great, no story is too small. And while we won't all have the same story, they are all for his glory. But we have to do it in steps. It's gonna be phases. He can't take you all the way over there at one time. You have to, you have to allow him to build you up to a certain point. And then your story becomes greater and greater and greater. Because it says greater, it's about advancements, it's about growth. So remember, it's higher learning because the Holy Spirit was sent to produce greater. We're moving to the head of the class, y'all. Don't be distracted by the storm, but keep your focus because keeping your focus is going to keep you intentional. And being intentional keeps you on priority. Be blessed. Have a blessed day. Let's move to the head of the class and break bread together. Be a witness. Stay in your word. All right, be blessed. All right, we'll see you next week. Love you. Bye.